this. Um, so we're in Genesis chapter four this morning. And one of the things, um, this text is always, you know, it's the first murder in the Bible. And one of the things that God had given me last night or the other day when I was working on it was that God, don't offer God low-hanging fruit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning. Don't offer God low-hanging fruit. What is low-hanging fruit? I know that's an idiom, a saying. But low-hanging fruit is just like what you see on a tree. Low-hanging fruit is easy to reach. Low-hanging fruit doesn't take any effort. Low-hanging fruit sort of right there, you know. There, there, you don't have to go out of your way to get it. It's the easy pickings of life, right? And that's kind of what we're going to see in this text. Cain offered God low-hanging fruit, something that didn't cost him anything, something that was easy, something that was just right there, right? Don't offer God low-hanging fruit. God wants the best from us in our absolute best. God knows what we're capable of. God knows our heart. But sometimes we just always want to take the easy way out. We want to do things that don't cost us much, that don't require much effort. And we're going to see in this text from the very beginning that that is one of the things that God is not, um, you know, fantastically appreciative of like we would think. Like, oh, I, I, I offered God something. He should be glad, right, that I offered. No, no. We're going to look and see at this text of what happened between Cain and Abel before that horrific murder. Let's start at Genesis chapter 4, beginning at verse 2. This is the New Living Translation. When she gave birth to Cain, that means Eve, his mother. Um, when she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, so there's a whole lot of time that passed. Obviously, all we hear is their birth, and then we hear when they grew up, and by the time, you know, the text starts again, they got a job, right? Not just a job, they have a profession. So we, did, we weren't privy to any of the life of Cain and Abel other than their birth, the text says, in the beginning of chapter 4. And by the time we get to verse 3, they grown. Okay, so there's not, you know, a lot of people think the Bible gives you the answer to every single question you ever had. If I ask a question about Cain and Abel's upbringing, you only going to hear speculation because it's not listed right here. You may be able to glean some things from different parts of the text, but you're not going to get it from right here. Right. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, Cain cultivated the ground. Right. So Cain's a farmer. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some, watch that, some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs as a gift to God. My goodness. Cain and his gift was not accepted by God. This made Cain, what, very angry. It didn't make Cain angry apologetic. It didn't make Cain say, you know what? I didn't do my best from the very beginning. No, he got angry. Then the Bible said he was dejected. So he looked at rejected. His countenance had fallen. His face had fallen. He was pouting and mad and stomping around and, you know, like, what? He didn't take my gift? You know, we don't know exactly, but we know what it's like for somebody to reject something that we bring, even if we know we didn't give our best. If they don't like the gift, we still upset, even if we know we were half-stepping when we gave it, even if we know we re-gifted a gift that somebody else gave us that we didn't want, we still mad that they don't want it. You know, that's the same kind of attitude, right, that Cain had. So God says to Cain, I'm in 4-6 now, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what's right. That's the thing. We want to push our will onto God. God said, you'll be accepted. I'm not rejecting you. I'm rejecting the way you gave me this gift. It's not even the gift that's wrong. It's the spirit in which he gave it. 
It wasn't the gift that was wrong. Wasn't Cain himself that was wrong. The text clearly says God is saying to Cain, you'll be accepted if you do what's right. But listen at this. But if you do, if you refuse to do what's right, watch out. Sin is crouching at your door, eager, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. This is verse 848. One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. The Bible says he slew him in that King James text. Cain lured him onto his territory. He took him out in the field. He took him out where he worked every day. He took him out where, you know, he was on his turf, off his thing. That's another thing. When we get out of our element, amen, we better be sure enough careful that we heard the Lord say, go over there, right? When we get off of where we're supposed to be, we better know that God said, go over there. My sermon topic is, God don't offer God low-hanging fruit. We really oftentimes just want to follow the crowd. When I'm in, I'm talking about natural offerings now. When I'm in services, I hear people trying to kind of arm twist people into making vows and giving certain offerings and doing certain things in, in that service. Give $200, give $1,000, do whatever, you know, pay some now. They even got almost like a layaway thing. I heard some people say, pay some now, pay some later, pay every month, just make the vow today. And we better be careful what we telling God we going to do. I tell people all the time and I do the same thing. I pray about what I'm going to give. Because I don't want to, not only do I not want to give it grudgingly, meaning I didn't want to give it, I'm mad because I gave it. But I want to fulfill all my vows to God. I want to do it in the right spirit. Because this is really talking about in the right spirit doing something, right? And so I don't want to be pressured into it. I don't want to be guilted into it. I don't want to be arm twisted into it. I don't want to be forced into it. I don't want to do it because my neighbor next to me is doing it. I don't want to do it because the person on the mic is telling me to do it. I want to do it because I know I want to do a good job unto the Lord. I want to offer God my best. Whatever my best is. If my best is one dollar. If my best is just me showing up to church today, that might be my best. Whatever my best is, I need to give that to God. And don't look at what nobody else is doing. Don't try to meet everything that they're asking for. I know some people even stay at home or they tip out of church before the offering because they don't have any money and they don't want to feel bad and they because they might not be able to participate in the fool whatever they're asking for but I say Lord God really wants us he says render your heart and not your garment God is asking for you right that's right your best according to God's plan that's right it's not according to what other people think and we got to stop worrying about what they think who is they right who's they anyway do your best unto God. God knows what you have. God knows who you are. God knows what it took for you to even get to this place, wherever that place is, spiritually, naturally. God knows, but don't offer God low-hanging fruit in an effort to just hear. Here goes something. Let me just do it. No, do it in the right spirit. Do it in the spirit of worship. Do it in the spirit of praise. Whatever you're giving unto God, right? In this text, God didn't even ask for an offering. God, there's no mention here in this in this pericope where God asked, bring me an offering. There's no nothing in this text that said God was asking Cain and Abel for an offering. No, but because you, they gave it, even if God didn't ask you for it, and you decide, I'm going to give something unto the Lord, whatever that give is. Don't half do it. Don't half step. Don't do take the easy way out. And I tell people all the time, and the text says this, to whom much is given, much is required. Anytime I ask God for more, it costs me more. It costs me more time. It costs me more and, and less of me. I get less of me and I have to give more of me to God, if that makes sense. When every I can tell every time I'm going to another level, it's always required more worship, more praise more study, 
more introspection, more time alone, more fasting, more sacrifice. It's always going to cost you more right? Salvation's free. The anointing is going to cost you to, to be in a space where people can use you, to be in a space where God can use you really to bless other people, right? Is going to cost you something. But that's part of my ministry is helping develop people, helping people grow up in God. That's really what I'm talking about. That's what all these periscopes are about. All the Bible studies are about is helping us grow up in God. So that we can be fit for God's use. There is a purpose for your life. There is a ministry. You might not be standing in the pulpit preaching. But you absolutely have a ministry. Whatever that ministry is. God wants you to do it in excellence. Do it unto God. Don't offer God low hanging fruit. You might not feel like it. Every day I don't. Every Sunday, I don't feel like going to church. Every time when it's Bible study, I don't feel like preparing it. It's not about how I feel, right? I do it as unto God, not about me, 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 me all the time, right? And so Cain looked dejected, but he offered God some of the crops. Right. But Abel went out of his way. The firstlings, the best of the, the animal that he had, the spotless. Right. The very best. It takes time to search through all you have to give God the very best. It doesn't take much effort to get low hanging fruit. Whatever's right there, you just grab it while you're on your way somewhere else. No. God said, take the time. Be in prayer, be in study, be in worship. Offer God your very best. Empty yourself of you. Let me empty myself of me so that I can offer God my very best, absolute best, right? That's what God really wants from us today. That's really all that I have for you is that please don't offer God low-hanging fruit. Do go out of your way. God deserves it. God is worthy, right? We're talking about the creator of all, the creator of the universe. How dare we come before God and half step? How dare we come before God like, here, I'm just here. You ought to be glad I'm here. I just showed up, you know? No, no. We don't want to have that attitude. And if you do have it, I've had it before. If you have that attitude, ask God to help you. Repent. Show you yourself. That's what I ask God all the time. I know we in the tell your neighbor dispensation, it seems, in the church. But I am a firm believer that I need to be looking in the mirror, working on me. It's all right to tell somebody else something, but I need to make sure I get myself right before God. And so that when I go out, I can do my best in the kingdom. So God bless you in whatever work that God has for you to do on today and every day. I pray, God, that you offer the best unto God, that God strengthens you renews your mind that your body is revived after we've been saved a long time you can get tired being on the same road for a very long time but i pray god encourages you and strengthens you to carry on and and liberate you because we, we get bogged down with a lot of stuff and um, we just need a spiritual release sometime that we can put god back in god's proper place at the top first in everything we do. So beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I thank you for joining me this morning and I pray God's blessings upon you. Go out and be a blessing. Be that light that someone needs. Thank you, cousin. Be that light that somebody else needs. Go out of your way to smile at somebody, to say hi to them. Don't ignore it may be the one person that needs to hear from you. You have a ministry. You have something to do for God. And you have people that only you can impact. Go forth and be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you on Wednesday. If you need to contact me, RevRuby.com. You'll find my contact information there. R-E-V-R-U-B-Y.com. God bless you. Bye-bye.